Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course to learn how to perform a seismic response history analysis in STAD Pro. Over the next series of videos, you will learn how to perform a seismic response history analysis, which will include the process for creating the time history load definition, defining the dynamic masses and the time history load item, specifying the maximum number of mode shapes, generating the load combinations, and finally reviewing the dynamic analysis results. For this training, we are going to be generating our time history analysis for a simple steel sample structure. First, we will go over to our pH control area at the left-hand side of your screen and click on the General tab and also the Load and Definition sub-tab. Here we will expand the Definitions group and also the load case details section. For the sample model, you will notice that the seismic load definition and load cases have already been generated in accordance with the IBC equivalent lateral force procedure. After the dynamic seismic analysis is performed, we will compare the base shear of the equivalent lateral force procedure load cases with the dynamic load case to ensure that the load factors are appropriate and in accordance with the requirements of ASCE 7, section 16.1.4. The first step in performing our seismic response history analysis in STAD Pro is to establish our time history definition. This also gets accomplished through the load and definition dialog, which is available when this general tab and load and definition tab are selected in the page control area. To start our time history definition, we will go over to the load and definition dialog, select the time history definitions option, and then we'll click add. From here, we can set up a variety of parameters, including our loading type, our function options, the damping, and the arrival time. For this exercise, we are going to set, up it, set it up as type number one, our loading is in terms of acceleration, but you can also enter it in terms of force or moment. And then we have a variety of function options. For this exercise, we are going to be using an external file that contains time history data pairs and will be referenced in to this time history load definition. The external file must reside in the same directory as the current input file and it must have no extension. In the data set that was supplied with this course, we have supplied an external file. So we will select the From External File option here, and then we will enter our file name, which will be eqdata.txt. Next, we will review any other options we need to change, and then we'll go ahead and click on the Add button. After we create our time history definition, we will select the Define Parameters option over in the left pane. And here we can enter a damping ratio and an arrival time. And for this exercise, we are going to enter an arrival time of zero seconds. After we enter all of our parameters, we'll go ahead and click on the Add button. And then we'll click Close. And we can see here that our time history definition has now been created. Our next step to performing a seismic response history analysis is to establish a new primary load case to represent the seismic response history load. In STAD Pro, only one load case can actually contain a time history load item. So we will be defining a primary load case to represent the dynamic load on the structure in the positive x direction. To define a new load case, I will go over to my load and definition dialog, highlight my load case details section, and then I'll click add. Here I will enter the load number and we'll use load number three. I will enter the title of my load as dynamic load in the x direction, and I will enter my loading type, and for this exercise we will select seismic. After we enter the parameters for our new primary load case, we will click on the Add button, followed by Close. 
The next step in defining the loads for our seismic response history analysis is to define the dynamic masses that will contribute to the seismic loading. The masses are specified in terms of weights and in the directions in which they are dynamically active. To begin defining your dynamic masses, we will go over to our load and definition dialog and highlight our dynamic load case. Then click on the add button. We can use a variety of different load items in order to generate our dynamic masses. And for this exercise, we are going to be generating loads in the global X, Y, and Z axis directions. And we are going to be using the self-weight load item and also the uniform member loads options for defining these masses. First, we will start with a self-weight. I'm going to highlight the self-weight load item over in the left-hand pane. And I'm going to select my first direction, which will be in the X direction. And I'll set the, po the factors to positive for all of the dynamic masses that I'm going to be defining. After I specify my first self-weight load item, I will go ahead and click on the Add button. And then I'll proceed with the other two global axis directions. Next, moving to the Y axis, again, a factor of positive 1. And then I'll click Add. And finally, also the Z direction. I will also assume some superimposed dead load will be acting as dynamic mass for this particular sample structure. And I'm going to be defining it in terms of a uniform member load. Over in the left hand pane, I will select the member load option. And I will enter the magnitude for this load, again, keeping with a positive factor on each one. I will enter 0.05 kips per foot. And I'm going to be generating this in the global X, Y, and Z axes. First the global X, then the global Y, and finally the global Z. I am finished defining my dynamic masses, so I'll go ahead and click on the close button. To complete the process for defining your dynamic masses, I must now assign each of these load items to the model. For the self-weight option, I'm going to highlight my first self-weight load item, and I'm going to assign it to every member within the model. And to do that, I could just simply click Assign to View, and then I'm going to click on the Assign button. And I'm going to repeat that process for the other self-weight options. Again, Assign to View. Next, I'm going to unselect everything in the model, and I'm going to select all of the members parallel to the global z-axis direction. These are the members that I'm going to assign that uniform mass to. To do that, I can simply go up to my menu bar and click on Select. I'm going to say Beams Parallel To, and here I can select the global z-axis. Then I can highlight my next uniform load and say Assign to Selected Beams. And I will repeat this process for the other masses. The final step that we need to complete for loading our model with our seismic response history loads is to define the time history load item within our dynamic load case. To start this process, I'm going to highlight our dynamic load case and then click on the Add button. From the Add New Load Items dialog, I'm then going to select our time history load item, which will reference the time history load definition that we previously created. Here I can enter my loading type and I can select either time load to apply the time history load to joints in the structure or the ground motion to apply the load at the structure's base, which we will be doing for this exercise. Next, I can enter the global axis direction that will represent the seismic load. And for this exercise, we are going to be specifying it in the global x direction. I can then enter the arrival time and I can select any previously defined arrival times used in the time history load definition. And here we only have one which is at zero seconds. I can then select the defined type 
and we only have one time history load definition and it's this one that we can select here. In the last field, this is our force amplitude factor. And here we need to specify a factor to multiply the values of force or acceleration, which were input while defining your time history loading. Now the data provided in the EQ data text file consisted of time acceleration pairs where the acceleration values are expressed as a fraction of g or the acceleration due to gravity. To convert this data file to the current input units, which is in feet, which we can see in the status bar, we will use the force amplitude factor to, mul to multiply the normalized acceleration by 32.2 feet per second squared to get it in line with the current input unit. If your text file that you're using on your model does not have normalized data and it's already according to the current input units, you can leave this factor set to 1.0. Here I'm going to enter my 32.2 feet per second squared and then I'll click on the add button followed by close. And here I can see my time history load item has been added.